welcome to this week's tutorial. Um, this week I'm going to be starting something new again and now I'm going to be starting to look at some uh, sports science based data. So we're going to be using some GPS data that I have sort of created myself. Um, so please don't be too hard on the data itself and just use some random number generators in Excel to create something that somewhat looks like what a training season might look like. Uh, going through some different phases of training, some builds, some maintenance weeks and so on. Um, and in this video, what I'm going to do is just start off really nice and simple, make a couple of graphs to look at our training load over time, and then look at our chronic and acute loads, and then I'll add in the ACWR as well. Uh, now this is something that I noticed somebody else on YouTube had posted a little while back. Uh, I'm just going to add my own little spin on it, it's slightly different to what they did, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, so I've already loaded my data in the background and I've created a date table. I always do that because I like to have a date table that's separate from my own data. Uh, so what we're going to do is let's just grab that and we'll add it to this guy. And we're just going to create as a date. And then let's just add uh, total distance as a value. If it wants to go in there. There we go. And what I'm going to do... I've just filtered this to one person within uh, my filter pane. Um, I'm just going to turn the background off on the visual. And then one extra thing you can do if you want to add a little bit of context to your visual or your bar chart is you can add in uh, the type of training session that you had. Uh, so here we've got uh, training and we can see each of the types. So I needed to have this as a column chart. So there we go. So now we can see uh, all our training sessions. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to click on training and I am going to get rid of our off days. Uh, so this won't affect my visual in any way. It's just going to remove it from the legend at the top. And I'm just going to change that at a couple points. Let's bring it to the middle. There we go. And then I'm just going to change some colors because I want them to all be roughly the same. So I'm going to have that. Uh, and then I'm going to start off light. I'm going to be all the same color. Uh, just hopefully there's a little bit of a difference uh, that you'll be able to see. And then this guy can be as dark as possible. There you go. Okay, so it's slightly the same color range. And then we're just going to go across. So let's just fix up our visual a little bit more. So we're going to uh, make these black, change the size of our font, because we want them to be visual. Um, cool. And then the y-axis, one thing I always do is get rid of our grid lines. As much as grid lines are nice, we don't need to see them on our chart. Okay, and there we go. Do that, and then our title can just go to the middle. There we go. Uh, so what we can do is we can just bring this chart down in size so it's roughly half of this. Okay, and then what we can do is we can add some uh, of our chronic and our acute loading. So let's go into tabular editor as I do. We're going to create a new measure and load data, and let's just call it uh, DD seven day. Uh, so the main difference that I do here is I like to have, um, yeah, let's go call rolling sums. I use rolling sums rather than a um, average. So this formula is going to look exactly the same. But I'm going to have sum. I'm going to put total distance in there. And then we're going to go dates and period. And we're going to use our date table because that's what we've got along the bottom. So date, oops, last date, date again. We need a minus seven and then date. And just like that. We'll format it. Edit and save. 
So at the moment, for some reason, this isn't coming through immediately. It might be a bit of a bug with tabular editor, but if you hit refresh, you'll get it to come through. So what we can do is one, we can either add it straight onto here. So what we can do is let's change this to a combo chart and let's add this in as a line value. But what we can do is we can change that. Uh, let's show on secondary. There we go. So now it kind of is built on top. Uh, you'll have to look obviously to the right to see the difference, but now you can see our seven day. So let's add in our uh, 28 day, but we can just duplicate that and change this to 28. Uh, and now all we need to do is change our seven to 28. And then the one thing I do differently here is I divide this by four. So I get roughly an average of each week. Uh, so we'll hit save or we can check our DAX, hit save. And then we'll just click refresh and that should come through as well. So now if we just add this also to our chart, we can see our values. So the last thing we need to do obviously to get our uh, ACWR is just, just that. We can just go and create a new measure here, which is called ADC, ACW, we'll go TD, TT, ACWR. There you go. And then it's just seven minus 28. Save that, refresh. Okay, for this, what we'll do is we'll just add this on a different chart. We'll just use an area chart of, um, that way it just doesn't overload our chart below. Uh, what we can do here is we can just now add our date again. Let's go to date. And then let's just add this in the values. What we can do is we can kind of line it up with below. So there, our final day. There's our first day. Uh, and then the one thing you will want to do here is you can change. Um, well, one, you can turn the axis off on the bottom if you like, because it's going to match up it below. Uh, and then two, I always change the range on the left hand side to between sort of half and two, just because then it's a little bit easier. Um, what you'll find with using this method and uh, you will get values that start out at four, and that's what you would expect for the start of that. I don't think there's any difference between using the coupled, uncoupled, and the weighted moving averages. Uh, they all kind of give you the same thing. And at the end of the day, we're using this to define if we are loading properly, rather than if uh, we're trying to predict an injury. That's a completely different topic and something I'm not gonna get into on this tutorial. So let's close that off there. Turn that off and let's just call this ACWR for now. Okay. There we go. Let's just turn responsive off. So then it's a little bit bigger. And what we can do is get rid of this here. There we go. So what we need to do here is just move this in slightly so it looks roughly the same. Oh, it's just going to keep clipping. Let's just leave that there for now. And then what we can do is move our title into the middle. And let's just change that as well to ACWR by date. So there you go. So the main difference between this and the other video is that you're going to get a consistent value over time. Um, we're not going to turn our axis into a categorical because if a player trained or not, it's kind of important to know where they are on a given day. So you can come in in the morning. Uh, with this and you will see um, if you have your your date table to expand by days you will see exactly the point they're at on that morning of training rather than where they were the night before so you'll get an idea of where they are and where they might be at the end of the day based on what you have planned um, so I really hope you guys enjoyed this video uh, if you have any questions comments please leave them below uh, and make sure you hit like and subscribe uh, and please join me next time so we can continue to power performance through data. Thank you.